Good morning, my beloveds, and welcome to worship again this Sunday. I have to say, I was completely delighted with the lectionary selections this week. I mean, how often do you get a fish story from the Old Testament and one from the Gospels as well? And so we start with Jonah and we will continue on from the Gospel of Mark. Now, how many of you have ever read the entire book of Jonah? It's such a great fish story. It could be a movie, I mean it, starts right out with a comedy scene. God speaks to Jonah and says, hey, Jonah, get up and go to Nineveh. Go tell him I said to repent. But Jonah says, uh, 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 I know you. You'll probably just forgive them. And I hate them. So I'll go my way and you go yours. And the people of Nineveh can just fry. So he travels the other direction not to Nineveh, but to Tarshish, and we're only up to the third verse. Now, when you read Jonah, which doesn't take long with only four chapters, you can almost hear the movie soundtrack, the clanging cowbell as Jonah tries to flee from the presence of God, and the uh-oh horn blast as Jonas bo Jonah boards the ship to Tarshish, and the swirling violins as the storm blows up. The tubas play as the sailors march down to get Jonah and toss him over the side. Then there's a slide whistle as he descends into the sea. There would be something akin to the theme from Jaws as the big fish approaches and, and in a big gulp, Jonah is swallowed. Now, Fast forward three days and I'm almost afraid to speculate what the huge belching noise would sound like as the fish spits him out. But with that, finally, Jonah does go to Nineveh to give the bad news. Repent, 40 days more and Nineveh will be overthrown. He's hollering up and down the streets to the people of Nineveh. What a nutcase with his 40-day warning. The people of Nineveh are doomed unless they change their wicked ways. But here's the great part. They do, and they're spared. So Jonah, the messenger of the Lord, pouts. So God has words with him again. <clears throat> Jonah, what is the matter now? And Jonah says to God, what is it with you? Why can't you follow through? God says, pardon me? Jonah, you let them off the hook. See how you are? I just knew you would do that. Jonah, I spared a city. Does that seem like something to get mad about? So Jonah stomps off to the edge of town to wait and see. Maybe God will smash Nineveh after all. It's hot, so God makes a little tree grow up to give Jonah shade. But when the tree dries up and dies, Jonah gets mad again. God says again, <clears throat> Jonah, what are you mad about now? And Jonah says, well, the, the little tree, that was senseless, just killing it like that. And God says, so let's get this straight. You're okay with me annihilating an entire city of people, but you throw a temper tantrum over me killing a tree and fade to black. Cut, cue, the music up, roll credits. Don't you just love it? Now contrast that with the fish story in the gospel reading. A simple narrative and typical of Mark, it's fast paced. After John the Baptist was arrested, Jesus went to Galilee preaching the message of God. Time's up, God's kingdom is here, change your life and believe the message. Passing along the beach of the Lake of, of Lake Galilee, he saw Simon and his brother Andrew net fishing. It was their regular work. Jesus said to them, come with me. 
I'll make a new kind of fisherman out of you. I'll show you how to catch men and women instead of perch and bass. They didn't ask questions. They dropped their nets and simply followed. A dozen yards or so down the beach, he saw the brothers James and John, Zebedee's sons. They were in the boat mending their fish nets. Right off, he made the same offer and immediately, did you get that? Immediately, they left their father Zebedee, the boat, and the hired hands and followed. Just like that. There's hardly even time to cue the music. Everything happens so fast. But look at the differences. Jesus is calling for repentance and then he starts calling individuals. Jesus is calling disciples. But here we don't hear any fussing like we did from Jonah. No pouting or arguing. Jesus call, they follow immediately. And what a contrast to Jonah. Simon, Andrew, James, and John drop what they are doing. They don't ask questions or hold a committee meeting or go to talk with 10 other people and get their opinions to decide if they think it's a worthy mission. No committee meeting, imagine. They get up and go. Nothing like Jonah at all. But in either story, there's something irresistible about the call of God. There's something powerful happening. It is God's will that is followed. It is God's will that it is done, whether we like it or not. Oh, now, right now, when we're in church, we claim we want God's will. We pray diligently every week. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. We may even say the words like we mean them, but later, much later, maybe tomorrow, just let God start doing what God wants without consulting us, we run the other way, or sit down under a tree and pout, or hunt for someone to blame. It's just a little bit crazy. A friend of mine says a normal person is one who knows two plus two equals four. A psychotic is one who thinks two plus two equals spotted puppies. A neurotic is someone who knows two plus two is four, but just hates it. Jonah knew about the reality of God's grace, but he just hated it. His idea of the kingdom of, Kev of heaven was when he and his reigned as supreme so that the Ninevites were excluded. But God's love for my brother means God doesn't love me more than my brother. As far as Jonah was concerned, that might be the downside of grace. The transformation comes when I realize that I am actually a beneficiary of that grace, even though at first it just kills me to come down off of my pedestal. The price for entry into the kingdom of God is giving up my citizenship and dreams of a different kind of glory in my own kingdom. A few days ago, one of my friends told me about her son's latest escapade. My six-year-old recently announced that he was starting a new club, the Drew Club. The club motto, remember Drew, is always right. He's the only member of the club so far. In truth, we're not so different though, only more so sophisticated in our, in our expression of it. Right now, sitting safely in our own places, doing things the way we've always done them, or at least from a pandemic perspective, we think Jesus is swell and a really great guy and all. But later, don't ask us to talk to anyone about matters of faith and don't let Jesus go too far with that fishing for people thing. Why we might find ourselves called to do something we don't want to do 
or minister to people we don't really like, or minister with people we simply can't stand. We want someone else to be the disciples and we'll be the commentators. We don't want to go to Nineveh. We don't want to put down our nets. What if God calls us to something we don't like? What if the call of God requires us to stretch ourselves spiritually, financially, and relationally? Can you imagine? The truth is, we don't want to give up our positions and our own kingdoms, so we run the other way. Later in the belly of the fish, we pray a nice prayer, butter God up a little bit, maybe later grudgingly go ahead and do what we're called to do. Fortunately, God's reign doesn't depend on us. Even if we do get about God's business after we get spit out on the shore, God's irresistible grace chooses us even if we are jerks like Jonah to do the work of the kingdom. And God's irresistible grace makes us able, even if we are lowly fisher folk, to carry the message and become disciples. Whether we like the program or ask to see the fine print, whether we are nasty, temperamental and pouting or totally trusting, God's mercy catches us God's grace reels us in and we're hooked. So we follow right now because right now we have the word of the Lord. Right now we have the good news. Right now we have the call to go out and fish for people. Right now if we'll just let God be the one on the throne. God will equip us with the gifts we need. Later, when we go where God has told us to go, that irresistible grace and love do, does the work. That's the good news for now and for later. Thanks be to God. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Enjoy your fishing this week and I'll talk with you again soon. Peace be with you.